Hey, so this is quite a different video to ones that I've made before. This is a discovery video about how I discovered that I have ADHD and my whole diagnosis process. And I am on day three of discovering that there's a high chance that I've got ADHD and <laughs> I just feel like crying because I have struggled with something, like a range of things that I could never like, I just thought were just me, that I was just like a failure in life and it was just part of my personality, I just thought, but it's not, it's through my brain chemistry and these things can be changed and worked with and in fact, there's a lot of really awesome things about ADHD and yeah, <laughs> I'm probably more the inattentive type, which is probably why I didn't get diagnosed when I was younger, although I used to have like these major, major um, mood swings, and I used to shout and scream at my mum because I used to be so overwhelmed with emotion, and I never knew why, I was like, that's one thing that I never really understood about myself. Um, I have trouble starting and finishing things so badly. Um, things just seem really boring and I feel so, I felt so dissatisfied with life and that's why I first started to figure out what was wrong with me because I have I was pretty good at school but it's because I'm I know I'm not stupid and a lot of a lot of school you could wing and then when it came into the real world you couldn't I couldn't wing it so much so I failed at um, AS levels I failed at my first college course after three months I gave up and this isn't something that I like widely go around telling people so people don't know this um, I, I tried to do open university and it didn't go well the first bit I could wing and then after that I just couldn't anymore I just couldn't sit down and get myself to work it was just so it was a problem within myself but I actually found out that it was more than that and it's so good to finally understand myself or just to begin finally understanding myself my anxiety issues, my depression my dissatisfaction with life, my emptiness all these feelings that I have are because of ADHD and the fact that my brain chemistry is off and I don't have enough dopamine levels and some other things that I don't quite understand yet and I've lost my trail of thought again and this is something that happens um, I have no idea what I was talking about. This is why my videos are edited, because they go all over the place. I've been on the NHS website, which is like the UK healthcare system. ADHD is something that kids more commonly have than adults, and the symptoms can go down quite a lot into adulthood. And with some people, they stick around, especially if they weren't treated and at the time. So I don't know if that's 100% true, but it's just what I've read. So the symptoms, sort of things I have, I'm going to print this off and take it to my doctor and be like, look, I have all these things, please can you um, refer me to a specialist? We want to apologise for cars going by my house because we do live right by a road which is kind of irritating I guess. Um, anyway, careless, so these symptoms are um, symptoms in adults and... Yeah, it says there's, it's hard to define them because it's largely due to a lack of research into adults with ADHD. It's a developmental order, disorder, which means it must first appear in childhood, and I see that it did for me. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're really hyperactive and stuff. You can be, there's like two different, there's three different kinds. You can be hyperactive, inattentive, or both. And I definitely think I'm more the inattentive, but I'm also quite impulsive. So I do have um, things from both, I think. Just explain so much, like, I just like, thought it was just because I was a sensitive person and just because I was an introvert. And then it turns out that a lot of people who are sensitive and introverts don't like, get so overwhelmed just sitting in a coffee shop for like, half an hour by everybody around them and all the noise and distractions. I can't focus on the conversation I'm actually having and I, I, I feel anxiety around it and just it's just so weird that this is actually what is the cause of it so I'm going off track again I'm sorry but I'll get into the symptoms of ADHD in adults 
carelessness and lack of attention to detail i think this <laughs> means for an example would be sort of like if you um i'll just take myself because it's just easier this way i don't know i don't know if these are all true to adhd obviously i don't I haven't even been diagnosed so i can't even go around saying that i have it or anything uh this this is exactly what happens with adhd but i can be different at work because i actually try and put more effort into it and it's exhausting um but yeah carelessness it's probably like not following methods to a T, I just wing it, like I wing so much stuff in my life and um, not paying attention to little things and like I'm so clumsy and I just mess up things quite easily and I, it just frustrates me so much. Carelessness, I guess like when the other day I, brought, I took Jasper out for a walk and then I brought him back inside and he had really muddy paws and it had been really muddy and rainy outside and I knew that but yeah, I opened the door, I let him in the house, I let him jump on the bed before realising oh my god, he's got mud all over my bed. Um, it's just things like that, I think. Um, poor organisational skills. People probably think that I actually am quite well organised because, like, again, I fake it a lot. <laughs> I just feel like I hide myself because I'm ashamed that I'm not actually an organised person at all in many ways. Um, just leave things to the last minute a lot I guess and um like I've got my MOT coming up and I still haven't booked it and um yeah it's just I don't want to go too far in depth in these I just want to kind of read them out and maybe give a couple of examples just because um I don't want to make this video really long um continually losing or misplacing things I, I constantly lose my phone I leave it in the car I leave it um in my bedroom in the bathroom I sit on it and just don't realise it's there and I'm looking around for ages and then Carl end up having to come and help me find something and he's just be like oh I know exactly where it is and I'm just not like that at all I lose things so easily inability to focus or prioritise forgetfulness restlessness and edginess I can't I struggle to sit still um, and I do feel on edge awful lot <laughs> that's why like I like to be alone a lot, that's why I like on breaks I, I sit outside in my car because I just want the peace and I don't want the distractions and I don't feel like I can relax unless I'm by myself. Difficulty keeping quiet and speaking out of turn, now this is something I don't think that I suffer with, maybe others think I do, I don't know but personally don't think I do, I'm very introverted and I've been shy since I was really young, like I'm not as shy anymore but I guess I do still have um, a lot more shyness in, my, in me than a lot of other people do and I've never wanted to um, upset people and be rude and um, yeah so I think I recognise that in myself so I don't do those things if that makes sense. Um, I also don't think I'm the, the hyperactive kind so much so I think that um, that explains why I don't have some of these things. Mood swings, irritability, Ill irritability and a quick temper. I don't want to go into that right now, but I definitely have mood swings and yeah, I get really, I, I feel really ashamed about them so I don't really talk about them much, but basically I just find that one emotion will just flood my entire lot of emotions and for example, I am not I often don't feel like happy in content so I'll be like yeah the reason I found this is because I was looking up a blog post like this forum post even with loads of like hundreds of comments basically someone saying they felt really like empty and unfulfilled with life and I literally only feel like super happy and excited when I'm being really creative when <laughs> something really fun and exciting is happening like I'm traveling or okay I can't think of many examples right now but so I was getting really depressed that my life is just going to be like this it's just going to be so mundane and boring it's like how can everybody else be happy living this way like it's not that i'm depressed because i'm still feeling like really excited and happy over certain things like my hobbies and my interests things that really like retain my um focus i guess i get like super focused in something and i it, it find it so incredibly fulfilling that when i go to work the next day i'm like wow this is like the opposite of this day and I'm so incredibly bored, how can I live like this 
kind of feelings and I've struggled with those feelings for years and years and years. That's what I struggled with the most and that's the reason like I just wanted to get somewhere in life and make something of myself and I just always feel like I haven't even though I think about it like I've actually got a half decent job but yeah it's, that's why I kept getting depressed and down and oh my god I just it just makes so much sense to me now in the past couple of days like since I found out about this I have not felt like that at all because I've been able to recognise the real cause of my suffering. Um, inability to deal with stress, yeah, I, 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 I am not very good at dealing with stress at all. I feel overwhelmed so easily. Extreme impatience. Um, I just I just quickly thought back to a video I made about being a highly sensitive person and I remember saying in it, like, I can't believe that I do not have a mental illness. <laughs> and, Hello, I found out what it is. <laughs> Extreme impatience, yeah, I hate, like, I don't play board games much because I just hate waiting for the other person to finish so I can take my turn, I just get so impatient. I hate waiting in queues. I am really impatient, but with people, I don't show it, I try, and um, I guess I space out a lot, I guess, but I try not to show it, so, again, I don't want to be rude, and um, I guess, like, for example, if I'm showing someone what to do at work, I don't really feel like impatient in those kind of situations because I feel like it's their thing rather than my thing if that makes sense um, but I guess I definitely feel a little bit awkward taking risks and activities often with little or no regard for personal safety or the safety of others for example driving dangerously I don't think I drive dangerously I'm, I recall in the past like when I've had like mood swings I've put my foot down a little bit I've braked too hard a little bit sometimes nothing too dangerous and I recognise that behaviour years ago and kind of put a stop to it so but I definitely like to feel the high of like of risks I guess um, additional problems in adults with ADHD so it can be people have like other conditions alongside it and I think it, get, it gets dismissed often as anxiety and depression and that's totally what happened with me so yeah I actually also dismissed it as having like a bad upbringing when I didn't actually have that much of a bad upbringing. Um, a lot of other people have had su such worse things and it was kind of felt like a little bit of a fraud <laughs> in some ways. Um, yeah I don't think I had a bad upbringing but there was many things from childhood that affected the way I am today definitely. Um, and I think emotional regulation was one of those things that did affect me a lot. Um, and ADHD isn't just genetic, like, there's mixed reviews, there's mixed things people put all over um, the internet. Some people say it's 100% genetic, some people say it has quite a bit to do with nurture as well. There's a lot of um, stigma around ADHD and a lot of people don't believe it exists and things like that and it's the, I, it's the same thing as when I came out as being like intolerant intolerant to gluten and some other I had other well say sensitive like I'm gluten sensitive I have other sense food sensitivities when I came out about that I got a couple of eye rolls and people not really like believing me and I'm just like okay you don't believe me that's not my problem if you know what I mean and I can kind of overlook that I mean it does annoy me obviously and makes me not want to tell people about it in case I get that kind of reaction but at the same time that's just the way like that person is and I'm not gonna go out my way to change their mind totally because I'm gonna get all wound up and mad about <laughs> pretty much so yeah so this is part one of my getting diagnosed with ADHD and I really what I really wanted to do was make like one video that express the whole process, um, me at different stages and whatnot. But seeing as this video is al already 17 minutes long, according to my camera, I can't really do that. I do that a lot. I just get off track and ramble. And <laughs> um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that there are loads of like benefits of ADHD. So that's great, and I'm not totally opposed to medication if that is what's advised for me. But the next stage is on Wednesday. I'm going to go to uh, my GP, hopefully. Hopefully get an appointment on Wednesday. I have to like ring up on the day. Get an appointment and then take my symptoms and be like, this is what's wrong with me. 
can I please get referred and then hopefully get referred and get diagnosed and then get treatment which is what I really 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 want um yeah I'm just super happy that I finally found out probably what is wrong with me it's definitely not the worst mental illness I don't know if it's a mental illness I think it's like a disorder thank you for watching this video and being patient with me and um stay tuned for the next installment I guess bye